What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Retro Hoop Collectibles. Um, we are just finishing up uh, and heading into the Eastern Conference Finals and the Western Conference Finals of the NBA uh, playoffs. And it occurred to me something that I wanted to look at, something that I've been wanting to kind of look at. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, and you guys probably do, 2020, 2021, somewhere around there, 2019, player by the name of Bol Bol, uh, uh, Manute Bol's son, for those of you that remember basketball that far, goes off and does this amazing play. He, he blocks the ball on one end, uh, somebody gets the rebound, he runs the floor, goes to the other side of the floor. Somebody passes him the ball. He hits a three pointer, comes back and blocks and blocks another one, and comes back comes back to the other side of the dunks the ball. I mean, he just has like this span of like five minutes of just amazing gameplay. The kid was just out of this world. Ends up having a pretty good game, and within I would imagine seconds, within minutes of this series of events happening you immediately just start seeing the prices on his cards just i mean literally just start doing this number and just going through the roof his base cards were selling his i mean uh you know his prisms his prism silvers his you know national treasure rookie rpas i mean everything was just selling I mean, we were just buying them up left and right and i thought to myself man you know this is crazy how is it you know like the 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 flippers, right? The flippers are really in tune with what's going on with with these players, where they're just watching them. And the moment you know some prospect that you know really hadn't been getting much shine, all of a sudden you know has a good little game, maybe hits three three pointers in a row, goes on a little hot streak, gets the hot hand, and prices just shoot through the roof. Same thing would happen if somebody would get hurt. You immediately can can go on i mean you can literally track it down to the minute go on and see the immediate sell off of all of their cards um which again was was really it was really interesting to see just kind of this volatility happen right and a lot of it's just fueled by you know uh, guys who are in it for the flip they're trying to make the quick buck they're trying to capitalize on you know events that are happening in the moment and things like that um and you know you you when when that is going on you're going to see that level of volatility you're going to see that volume you're going to see the ups and the downs and all that stuff but still at the time it was a very prevalent thing that was going on within the hobby and with what's been going on with luca this year you guys know i'm a big luca fan with what's been going on with luca this year i've been just kind of quietly picking up base rookies and things like that um, because I, I, you know, I genuinely like him as a player. I think long term he's going to be a really great player. One of his biggest hits was that he doesn't have a championship yet, which is fine. I mean, he's only what four years into the league, so um, you know, so it, it was one of those things where a lot of people were like, "Oh, he's washed. He's not really as good as people think he is. He's overrated. This, that, and other." And I was just thinking to myself, okay, with what happened, with what he did to Phoenix. Uh, in in the final in game seven where the Dallas Mavericks just absolutely dismantled the Phoenix Suns. I mean, they were it was just it was unreal. Um, and the performance that Luca put on that night, the Dinwiddie put on that night, uh, Brunson put on that night. I mean, it was just a, it was an amazing game to watch if you if you uh, didn't see it live. And I immediately thought to myself, I wonder what those card prices are going to look like i wonder if if the run-up is happening like i would think it's going to happen and so what i want to look at today is uh, uh we're going to look at some card prices uh but more importantly i want to uh, show you guys kind of a, a, a thing that uh, i kind of just discovered myself within within card hedge so if you guys don't know card hedge is a sponsor of the channel we appreciate them uh, uh jumping on board and um, they, they have an awesome tool. So CardHedge, CardHedger.com. Uh, the link is in the description if you guys want to sign up. Uh, I think you get a free seven-day trial. They also just recently passed, I think it was 100,000 cards uh, added to their um, added to their platform. And that's, I mean, that's not an easy thing to, to do. They're literally adding hundreds of uh, cards a day. Um, and they're adding, uh, you know, every day it's updated with the, with the latest um 
with the latest sales information off of uh, a bunch of different platforms. So let me see. I think it was 100,000 that they hit the other day, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Anywho, yep, 100,000. So congratulations to them on that. Um, but anyway, so this is my dashboard. I have to add more stuff to this because um, I don't really... Uh, they, they have a section in here where you can add your collection. I've added some things on here, but uh, I don't really have a lot of like my... I have more vintage stuff in here than anything, but I, I really don't have... Um, any of my like more modern stuff um, card prices which we'll get into in a second and then as I've always told you guys my favorite thing is the compare tool where you can compare PSA versus SGC versus raw prices and they also um, have a bunch of other stuff in there as well so but what we're gonna look at today is card prices because I, I, I found something really interesting if you click on card prices it's basically giving you the top movers the movers and the shakers the the ones that that you can um, see and they have a sort here and it's the highest volume in the last seven days is what I have it sorted by. So we'll click on basketball. They have baseball, basketball, football, hockey, soccer, Pokemon, um, GPX. I have no idea what that is. Magic, Marvel, racing, tennis, WWE, and MMA, which is, wow, that's a lot. I didn't notice. I didn't realize they had racing and magic and all this other stuff. Anyway, so, um, so I, I have it just by basketball right now. So if we're looking at the top five, one, two, three, four, five. And even six, I'll even go six, six, seven honorable mentions. But the last seven days, the volume, if we were still trading in this arena of volatility, right? Flipper mentality, right? Then what you would expect to see is you would expect to see John Morant's prices going down. You would expect to see Luca's prices going up. Uh, you would expect to see Jason Tatum's prices going up. You would expect those three to be kind of the top 10. Um, and you would expect to see, uh, I said jaw, but you expect to see jaw going down because he's hurt. He's not going to play, you know, this, that, and the other. So if we're looking at the last seven days by volume, this John ja Morant Panini Chronicles basketball, which there's a lot more to this card. You guys know that is the number one mover in basketball. Uh, over the last seven days just look at this look at th this is now obviously a lot of it has to do with young Dolph uh, being in the background for those of you that don't know he's uh he was really really big hip-hop artist that got murdered um and 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 there you know he's in this card he's from Memphis job plays for the Grizzlies all that good stuff so um but it's um that that has a lot to do with the the kind of the allure of the card but couple that with he just had an amazing uh, run in the playoffs, was playing phenomenal. He was kind of showing signs of just being like, uh, I mean, a world beater. This kid was all over the place, and then somebody punched him in the knee and broke his kneecap or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I say that kind of half jokingly, but I think he got punched in the knee, and then he had like knee soreness or a knee strain or something like that, and they ended up getting eliminated, and, and none of it just really didn't work out. But um, so, but if you look at, I mean, look at the card price, look at the run up. This was May 3rd, so this was first round of the playoffs, and Jaw's playing out of his mind. So take the fact that Jaw was playing out of his mind, plus the young Dolph connection there, and then, uh, you know, everybody's like, all right, let's 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 relax here for a minute, and, and then it kind of went back down, but still sitting up very high. And his price continues to rise, even though they are out of the playoffs, even though he left the playoffs injured. Um, but what this tells me is that people really still believe in him long-term, and there wasn't this subsequent huge drop off in his prices that dropped them below, you know, what was the norm at the time, which was like $120 for this particular card. Now, the reason why this is number one is simply by volume, right? I mean, they've sold, um, here, let's go back to basketball. I think his volume, 200 in the last seven days, 200 observed sales, according to, to Card Hedge and how they pull their sales data. Um, the next one being his base Panini Prism. The fact that his base Panini Prism is selling tells me a little bit about the people that are buying the card. I, I feel like, because this is how I am, right? Um, if I really, I really like Luca. This weekend when I'm going to be at the Dallas Card Show, I'm going to be trying to buy myself a Luca base Prism rookie. Because I can't afford to buy the base, I mean, the, 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 the you know, any of the parallels, let alone the silvers and things like that. They're just out of my price range. So if I'm a true collector, if I really just want to collect this player, I'm going to go for the cheapest of the highest provenance, if you want to call it, card. And in this case, it's the base Luca, the base jaw. And the fact that the second card that has the highest volume in the last seven days is still John Morant, and it's the base 
prism tells me that there's probably a lot more collectors and people who are really looking at Ja as a great player that they want to follow for quite some time, probably long term. And they're just probably not in it for the flip anymore, which leads me to believe that really the flipper mentality is, I feel like it's kind of gone somewhere else. I, I don't know where it's at. I really don't care, to be honest with you. Um, but And then the third highest card to sell is Luka Doncic. Again, seven day volume, 142 cards, very neck and neck here because 145 cards, seven day volume for the jaw base uh, prism rookie and then 142 for the Luca base prism rookie. Again, these are um, the last seven days. So this all makes sense to me, right? The fact that jaw, the fact that Luca is in the top five, six, seven, uh, Tatum is in the top six, seven. The one that's really interesting is this 90 Fleer basketball, Michael Jordan base. Um is is in this top 10 103 or uh, in the last seven days is in the top five 103 sales observed um and if we look at the card not really much of a run-up it just seems to be very steady sales over the last few months uh if i look at the last three months again this is psa 10 and and you know that's probably the most sought after but I mean, 260, 270 all day long. It just kind of hovers around there. Uh, it's not really moving around too much. The last 60 days has been the same thing, and the last seven days has been pretty consistent. Um, once again, tells me that there's more collectors. I mean, uh, uh, you know, Jordan's after the last dance. There's really nothing else that Jordan's gonna do to really raise his prices. So it makes me think that people are real collectors are buying it either people are holding it long term or they're just kind of holding it as an asset that that's worth some money and instead of buying you know s p you know 280 dollars worth of s p 500 they're buying a 280 dollar michael jordan rookie card because it's cool because uh, you can't put a stock on the wall you can put your card on the wall i guess i don't know um which you know kind of leads me to the same thing with the kobe so again this is tops rookie base kobe rookie card um, again, kind of been taking a bit of a tumble in price, but again, it's here in this top five because it is, uh, in volume, 101 cards observed in the last seven days. And then of course we have from here, we have Jason Tatum, which is playing phenomenal at the moment, 184 cards in the last seven days. And, uh, and then base Luca, uh, rated rookie, which is, um, Again, base rated rookie. We're not even talking about parallels or nothing, silvers or nothing, uh, or hollow in this case. Uh, and then we got Ja, and then more Jordan, and then Shaq. So I don't know. I'll 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 kind of leave you guys with that. But I, I when I see this kind of stuff, I it it's it, it makes me a little happy because it it tells me that again. I feel like those of us who are buying these cards are kind of buying them because we really like the player. And despite the fact that John Morant has been eliminated from the um, the playoffs and he also exited with an injury, um, didn't really have any bearing on his value and on his volume. And uh, that's great. I think that's great. I think we're probably going to start seeing a little bit more of that and prices are probably going to start leveling off and... Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll, we're actually, hopefully we're rid of this, this volatility, which I'm, I'm all for it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, do, do you feel the same way I feel? Do you, are you seeing that like out in the card shows and stuff? Well, I'll be at the Dallas card show this weekend. Um, so I'll be looking to, you know, buy some stuff, but I just don't really think that we're playing off of the flipper mentality anymore, which is great. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thank you to Card Hedge for being a sponsor. Um, and as always, I love y'all. Peace.